For many people, the American flag is a symbol of pride for our country, but for some, it means more. I went into the service in 1987. Being a woman in the military has been an interesting experience. Brooke Jackson Khan joined the military in 2009 and enlisted as a combat medic. I think it was always something internally um, as a question of if I could do it. It's kind of a challenge. Most men in her family joined the military while most women became nurses. She decided to combine the two. Really wanted to serve my country. I had that internal sense of duty. She deployed to Iraq in 2010, served as the battalion commander's personal medic, and took her commission as an officer as a physician assistant in 2018 for the U.S. Army Reserves. I'm very proud of the fact that I am a woman in a man's world. But she had a realization when coming off active duty. The assumptions were that I basically maybe have set a bunker when I was deployed and didn't pull my weight, and as a female, I couldn't possibly have seen any kind of action or anything like that. And the reality is women have served in combat zones doing the same thing as men. In PA school, she found several disconnects. PTSD is both underdiagnosed and under treated in the female veteran. A recent report from the organization Disabled American Veterans found there are gaps for female veterans when it comes to health care, transition services, disability compensation, housing and employment. It also found the Department of Veterans Affairs and Department of Defense are not fully prepared to provide equitable access to the gender specific care and services that women need. On top of that, Khan says there are a lot of stigmas. Men go off to war and you know, they return and they're called a hero. Appropriately so, they absolutely are. Um, unfortunately for women, we go off to war and a lot of times we're referred to as just a bad mom. Khan looked for a group of women in the low country who shared her military experience but couldn't find one. So she started her own called She's the Veteran. But this will be the first one that's just for us, just for us women. It's how she connected with Julie Harrison, a U.S. Army veteran living in the low country. And I deployed overseas to Germany and I supported the 32nd Army Air Defense Command. She also faced challenges when returning to civilian life trying to figure out you know first of all you know what job am I going to do how does it translate being in military intelligence to a, a job in you know in corporate America and then for me I, I know it was a bit lonely leaving the military and just feeling like I was isolated and on my own Melissa Washington, CEO and founder of the National Group Women Veteran Alliance, says this is a problem all over the country. I knew there was some need, but I didn't realize the need that there was because of there's such a gap when it comes to services and resources and connecting women and veterans with that. She's the veteran will hopefully give female veterans in our area a sense of camaraderie and help them find resources. I think the common things are, are jobs and housing. And, and probably medical after that. But really the biggest need, and, and that's why she's the veteran is so important, is because it's that sense of community. I think it's important for people in society also to be educated about who we are. These women say they are proud to have served and ask that you don't make assumptions when it comes to the typical veteran. Don't automatically assume if you see a woman in an army t-shirt that it's her husband's t-shirt. We obviously have a long ways to go to show girls that they can grow up and they can do this. They can be in the military. They can serve their country. Khan plans to earn her doctorate and do more research on female veterans. In the meantime, She's the Veteran will host its first event in the next few weeks. Reporting for Live 5 News, I'm Abby O'Brien.